All right, mates. How's it going? In today's video, we're doing vanilla death knell and Tyrus Foul Glades for the Forsaken. So let's go. Bound to the iron will of the tyrant Lich King, the vast undead armies of the Scourge seek to eradicate all life on Azeroth. Led by the Banshee Sylvanas Windrunner, a group of renegades broke away from the Scourge and freed themselves of the Lich King's domination. Known by some as the Forsaken, this group fights a constant battle, not only to retain its freedom from the Scourge, but also to slaughter those who would hunt them as monsters. With Sylvanas as their Banshee Queen, the Forsaken have built a dark stronghold beneath the ruins of Lordaeron's former capital city. This hidden undercity forms a sprawling labyrinth that stretches beneath the haunted woods of the Tirisfal Glades. Though the very land is cursed, the zealous humans of the Scarlet Crusade still cling to their scattered holdings, obsessed with eradicating the undead and retaking their homeland. Convinced that the primitive races of the Horde can help them achieve victory over their enemies, the Forsaken have entered an alliance of convenience. Harboring no true loyalty for their new allies, they will go to any lengths to ensure their dark plans come to fruition. As one of the Forsaken, you must massacre any who pose a threat to the new order, human, undead, or otherwise. Our adventurer today is called Mr. Sloppy Chops. Up until recently, Mr. Sloppy Chops was a slave to the Lich King's will. However, not anymore. He found himself in a small forsaken village called Death Knell. Nestled in a valley just north of Silverpine Forest, this area is used by the Forsaken to obtain natural resources, mainly gold. Unfortunately, the gold mine has been overrun by spiders, and the Forsaken are constantly under threat by the fanatical Scarlet Crusade and the Scourge. Upon leaving the Death Knell crypt, Sloppy Chops was greeted by a bloke called Undertaker Mordo. It's about time you woke up. We were just about ready to throw your ass in the fire, but it looks like you made it. Bet you're glad you got free will now, eh? Go talk to Shadow Priest Sarvis in the chapel. He'll let you know what the balls is going on. When Sloppy Chops arrived at the chapel, Sarvist explained, You've been freed from the Lich King's control by the Dark Lady, our leader, Lady Sylvanas. She guides us in our war against the hated Scourge and all those other bastards that want us real dead. Speaking of the Scourge, there's a whole bunch of them running around the village. Mindless ones, we call them, because they're bloody idiots. Go kill five mindless zombies and five wretched ghouls. So our hero did that, and he loved it. It's a shame those mindless ones are too stupid to join us, but who gives a shit, right? Next, I want you to kill 12 Rattlecage Skeletons. They're a bit tougher, so watch out or something. Before Sloppy Chops could leave, a woman named Elreth was like, Hey, I need six scavenger paws and six duskbat wings. I use them to tend to the wounded and make gear and stuff. So Sloppy Chops went on a murder spree of wolves, bats and skeletons and stuff. When he returned, Sarvis expressed his gratitude, but then basically just told Mr. Sloppy Chops to piss off. Elreth still had another quest for him though. Thanks for the paws and wings. So here's a story for you. I had a friend called Marla Phipps. She and her husband, Samuel Phipps, lived around here before the plague. When the plague came, Samuel Phipps succumbed and turned into a Scourge zombie. Marla Phipps didn't, but ended up dying anyway because her husband killed her. Bloody jerk. Anyway, her last dying wish was to be buried with her beloved Samuel Phipps. He'll be roaming around. You'll know him when you see him. Beat him up and then bury him by Marla's grave. Cheers, mate. Mr. Sloppy Chops was really confused by this story. How the bloody hell did Elrath know what Marla's dying wish was? Was she there? Did she just sit there and watch Samuel Phipps murder his wife? What a bitch. Also, there were a couple of guys outside the chapel with exclamation marks above their heads. One called Executor Aaron explained that Death Nail's gold mine was overrun with spiders. We need that gold to survive, Mr. Sloppy Chops, but I'm scared of spiders. So go kill ten of the young ones and eight of the not young ones. The other guy was like, we've got a whole bunch of fresh out of the ground recruits, so we need some equipment for them. Otherwise they'll be running around naked. Ain't nobody got time for that. Go collect six scavenged goods and bring them to me. First up, the mine. Mr. Sloppy Chops cleared out some nasty spiders, but also collected some equipment for that other guy and returned to hand those quests in. Executor Aram was pleased that the mine would soon be operational thanks to our hero's efforts. My scouts have reported that a detachment of the Scarlet Crusade is setting up camp southeast of here. Those twats can't tell the difference between us and the Scourge, so go kill a bunch of them. 
and bring me 12 of their scarlet armbands as proof. Mr. Sloppy Chops head out and killed a whole bunch of Scarlet Crusade peeps. It took bloody ages, because he could only kill one at a time. He also found that Samuel Phipps guy and beat the shit out of him. Then he head back to Death Knell so he could bury Mr. Phipps' remains next to his wife. Novice Elrath was happy. Mr. Sloppy Chops had done a good deed that day, and Executor Aram was also pleased. However, the Scarlet Crusade was still a problem. My superiors in Brill have told me that there's a Scarlet Crusade messenger hanging about. He's got important information on his person, and I want it. So Mr. Sloppy Chops head out once again, found the messenger, named Mevan Corgal, and straight up murdered him, and looted his corpse. The document contained directives for three commanders within the Tirisfal region, Captains Melrose, Vacon, and Perrin. Executor Aram wasn't overly impressed with the information. You'll need to take this to my superior in Brill. You've been useful here, Mr. Sloppy Chops, but you need to head out into the world and make something of yourself. So off Mr. Sloppy Chops went, out into the world to make something of himself. His next stop was Brill, a small village in Tirisfal Glades. On the way there, he stumbled across a guy called Calvin Montague. Can you take this letter to the innkeeper in Brill? The name's Rene something something. Who cares what her last name is? I'm tired and I can't be bothered, so you do it. You'll be paid handsomely, I promise. Another quest on the way to Brill was available. Death Guard Simmer wanted Sloppy Chops to go to a farm to the west. Humans infest the land like mold on a rotting corpse. Teach them a lesson and steal ten of their pumpkins. Sloppy Chops couldn't be bothered, and so he told him to piss off. Also, there was a big abomination jerk called Gordo that wanted our hero to collect some gloom weed. By this point, Mr. Sloppy Chops was starting to get a bit annoyed because he has OCDs about his quest list, and it was filling up faster than a swear jar at a Tourette's convention. But he reminded himself that XP is good, and you need it to level up and stuff. He continued his journey to Brill, and managed to collect the gloom weed required on the way. Things didn't get any better when Mr. Sloppy Chops reached Brill. It felt like everyone and their grandma wanted him to do something for them, and his quest list got even longer. Executive Zygand was pretty excited about the report from Executor Aaron. This was just the break they needed to turn the tides in their battle against the Scarlet Crusade. Go to the Soladin farmstead, kill ten of them, and then we can focus on the larger threat, the Lich King's Scourge. Some guy called Death Guard Burgess piped up and was like, Killing Scarlet Crusaders, are you? Bring me ten of their insignia rings. I can send them to Varimathras to prove that we're out here actually being useful and stuff. Junior Apothecary Holland explained that the Blob Gordo was actually a little bit hard of hearing. Unfortunately, even though he'd asked Sloppy Chops to grab Gloomweed, they actually needed Doomweed, so that kind of sucked. Another guy, Apothecary Johan, approached our hero and was like, Lady Sylvanas has requested that the Royal Apothecary Society creates a new plague. It'll destroy Arthas' Scourge, or at least that's the plan anyway. Firstly, I'll need five vials of Darkhound blood. Mr. Sloppy Chops also found a wanted poster outside the town hall for an undead knoll called Maggot Eye. Maybe he'll take care of that at some point. He headed into the inn and gave the innkeeper the letter from Calvin Montague. She accepted it and then was like, thanks, now get lost. Come back when you got some coin to spend, you twat. Mr. Sloppy Chops realised he'd been duped and he wasn't going to get paid handsomely after all. So he marched all the way back to Calvin Montague to give him what for. And Calvin was like, you what, mate? Do you even lift? They had a fight. Eventually Calvin surrendered, and our hero was like, Give me my money, bitch! And all was right in the world. Next, Sloppy Chops decided to head to the Soladin farmstead. He decided he'd steal those pumpkins after all, since he was at the farm anyway. He also killed a whole bunch of Scarlet Crusade blokes, and some Darkhounds. It was brilliant. He returned to Brill and handed in his completed quests. Apothecary Johan had a follow-up to the pumpkin thing. He laced one of them with some special formula, and asked our hero to go give it to a captured Scarlet Zealot that was chained up in the cellar of the inn. As Sloppy Chops approached the human, he was like, Stay away, you unholy bastard. The light will protect me. Wait, is that pumpkin? I bloody love pumpkin. The human prisoner ate the pumpkin, and then died. Johan didn't really seem all that bothered about the whole thing, and just moved on to the next part of his new plague questline. Thanks for the vials of Darkhound blood, Mr. Sloppy Chops. I need more reagents for the disease to spread properly. Go and get me five vial fin scales from Murlocs. Executor Zygand also had a follow-up quest. He wanted our hero to take out one of the Scarlet Crusade captains. Captain Perrin. Go kill him, three Scarlet Zealots, and three Scarlet Missionaries. Some guy called Magistrate Severin appeared and was like, do me a favour, take these orders to Bethor Ice Shard in Undercity. He wanted me to send him an agent with proven worth against the Scourge. And you seem like the guy for the job. Mr. Sloppy Chops was happy to take a break from Brill, so he headed towards the old ruins of Lordaeron. After spending about an hour trying to figure out how to get into Undercity, Sloppy Chops found the entrance. He headed to Bethor Ice Shard, and the Forsaken Lord gave him a new quest. There's a Lich who dwells on an island in Brightwater Lake. He's regained his free will from the Lich King, but he doesn't realise others have too. So he just attacks anyone who tries to talk to him. I want to know who he is, so I need you to sneak into his camp 
and steal a spellbook. Time to leave Undercity already. That was fast. Next, Mr. Sloppy Chops decided to go kill Captain Perrin. So he did that. He returned to Brill, and Executor Zygand now wanted him to kill the next captain. Captain Vacon and five Scarlet Friars. But that could wait for a bit. Our hero decided to head to Garen's Haunt next. On the way, he found the Doomweed that Junior Apothecary Holland wanted. He also found Maggot Eye, the undead knoll with a bounty on its head. So he straight up murdered it. He found a bunch of murlocs and killed them until he had five vile fin scales. And finally, he found the Lich's camp and stole his spellbook. Mr. Sloppy Chops returned to Brill again. He was getting sick and tired of this village. This game might as well be called World of Brillcraft. He handed in the completed quests. Apothecary Johan now wanted four lots of vicious nightweb spider venom for his plague. Sloppy Chops also quickly returned to Undercity and handed Bethel the Lich's spellbook. Oh, bloody hell, it's Gunther Arcanath. Many years ago, me, Gunther, and Thul Ravenclaw used to be mates. We were students within the Kirin Tor in Dalaran, but we fell to the plague, and I thought Gunther was dead. Glad he isn't. Anyway, I've put a spell on his book. Can you take this book back to him for me? Next, Sloppy Chops headed towards Balnea Farmstead. He spoke to Death Guard Linnea in a small camp, and she was like, We protect the Bulwark, which is the point of access between the Plaguelands and Tirisfell Glades. If you headed to the farmstead, can you kill eight bleeding horrors and eight wandering spirits? That'd be cool. So our hero did that. He then headed a little bit further north and killed Captain Vacon and the five Scarlet Friars. And even further north than that, he killed some spiders for their venom. Mr. Sloppy Chops then returned to the Death Guard and handed in her quest, and then muttered profanity under his breath because it was time to return to Brill again. Executor Zygand now wanted our hero to kill the final captain, Melrake. Mr. Sloppy Chops pointed out that the document from the Scarlet Crusade messenger in Death Knell had listed the captain's name as Mel Rose, and Zygand was like, Sometimes the quest text has typos. Big whoops. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Apothecary Johan was pleased with his spider venom. The formula for his new plague was complete. All that was left was to test it. There's a captured mountaineer in the cellar of the inn now. Go give him this drink. As Mr. Sloppy Chops approached the mountaineer, he was like, Just you wait until the steam tank brigade arrives to rescue me, you twat. Wait, is that beer? I bloody love beer. The dwarf prisoner drank the plague drink and died. A ghoul called Coleman Farthing approached our hero and gave him a few quests. The Agamond Mills had been overrun by the Scourge, and Coleman wanted five notched ribs and three blackened skulls for some unknown reason. Also, he was apparently collecting the remains of the Agamond family, as if they were Pokemon or something. Go collect the remains of Devlin Agamond first. So Mr. Sloppy Chop slayed Devlin and returned. Now I want Nyssa, Gregor, and Thurman Agamond's remains. Go get them. So Mr. Sloppy Chops slayed all of those assholes and returned. Both Coleman Farthing and Magistrate Severin then wanted our hero to go to the Agamond family crypt and kill a whole bunch of things. Wailing ancestors, rotting ancestors, and some guy called Captain Dargol, who was using necromancy to raise this army of Agamonds. So Mr. Sloppy Chops slayed frickin' everyone and returned. It turned out, Coleman had once worked at the Agamond mill. His employers, the Agamonds, had convinced the workers to stay and defend the mill whilst they locked themselves inside when the Scourge attacked. The workers were dumb and loyal, and everyone died, including Coleman. Basically, he just wanted revenge on them for causing his death. So why did you want me to kill Captain Dargol? Well, that guy was just a dick. Only a couple of things left to do now. Mr. Sloppy Chops headed towards Scarlet Watch Post to complete Zygan's quest. On the way, he saw a big monastery surrounded by Scarlet Scouts that were like level 30, so he decided it might be an idea to avoid that. He killed Captain Melrake and returned to Zygand. Great. Cheers, mate. With those three captains taken care of, we should be able to focus on the Scourge threat now. See ya. Mr. Sloppy Chops then head back to the Lich's camp on Brightwater Lake. He handed the Lich the book, and it was like, I was wondering where that'd gone. Did you steal it, you jerk? Wait, what's this? He noticed the enchantment and realised the truth. Alright, fine. Take this nether gem back to Bethor. It's like a phone. It'll help us communicate. You could also take one of those candles if you want. It'll summon a wraith called Lilith Nefara. She's a total bitch. Go kill her. Sloppy Chops considered this, looked at the Lich, and said, Nah. When Mr. Sloppy Chops returned to Bethor with the Nether Gem, he realised his work in Tyrus Glades was done. The next logical step in Sloppy Chops' adventure would be to head to Silverpine Forest. The Forsaken's claim to that land was constantly under threat by wizards and Scourge and Knolls and Worgen, and it was a right ball lake. And we're leaving it there! I probably didn't do those zones any justice at all. Next week it looks like we're doing Night Elves in Shadow Glen and Teldrassil. So there'll probably be a few jokes about trees burning down or something. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!